This is an SM Media production. Hi everyone and welcome to the debut episode of the Horse Racing Show on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. When we do the when I've done the horse racing show, obviously over the past few months, we've obviously had a partner on crime helping me with it. He's now with the Scottish Daily Mail, Callum McClurkin. He's so good in the Cheltenham show we've brought him back for the horse racing show. Callum, it's a pleasure to welcome you back. How are you? Yeah, all well here. Uh, pleasure to be back as well, off the road to Cheltenham and on the road to entry. Definitely. We'll be doing this show whenever there's a big meeting, whenever there's a big talking point, we'll be here with the show. So we'll get straight into it. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a preview of all the racing at Aintree over the week, but we're going to start off with the news over the weekend of the retirement of one of the greatest, great British jump jockeys of all time, Richard Johnson. Carl, were you surprised when you heard Dickie was retiring and what legacy does he leave in the, the sport of horse racing? Uh, slightly surprised, yeah. Um... I think there was rumours of it midway through the season that he, he might he might call it quits. Um, he's done it in a typically understated fashion, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, for thirty years, you know, he's been he's been doing it and top of his game, absolutely fantastic jockey. But, but even an even better person by the sounds of it. I mean, yeah. all the tributes coming out, nobody has a bad word to say about him at all. Um, particularly from a personal point of view, you know, uh, going to a race course, you know, the lure of Richard Johnson riding there. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it was just one, two, or three rides was was quite significant. And uh, whether he was riding at Ayr or, or Musselburgh or, or a Cheltenham Gold Cup, you know, he always had that smile on his face and all, was always going to give it a hundred percent. And I think you know it's a dog dicky drive, isn't it? The mm-hmm. way he the way he pushes himself and the way he pushed horses under that infamous drive. There's so many moments, you know, his association with Native River towards the end of his career is is unbelievable. Um, Personal point, Deffy de Soy in the Triumph Hurdle was mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, but his, his ride in 2002 in the Champion Chase and flagship of Borales, yeah. he, he was favourite and he just looked totally disinterested. But, I mean, Johnson wasn't, you know, he roused him up, one one like a favourite should in the end. Um, and by luck, I stumbled on uh, 1999 Stairs Hurdle and Ansem, and he won it 40 to 1, beat the Irish banker, and he was. Under the pump, half a mile out in a stairs huddle, three miles, the 40 to 1 shot. You think it's been no chance, absolutely no chance. It, and you still don't think it'll win till the last 50 yards. And if you take anything away from today, then I would, I would encourage you to watch the 1999 stairs huddle and Richard Johnson winning and Ansem at 40 to 1. It's unbelievable stuff. Yeah, definitely. Unbelievable jockey, unbelievable person as well. I remember meeting him at Musselburgh a few years ago. Just couldn't be any nicer. Just a brilliant person. Really good name in the sport as well. Just that it seems as if we're, we're at that stage where Ruby's gone, McCoy's gone, Gareth has gone, Johnson's gone. It's, there's a legacy of jockeys now that's just fine, but just enjoy them while they're here. David Ross was probably the last of them, isn't he? Yeah, it's a little bit of an end of an era, isn't it? Yeah, hi. Didn't, didn't quite get the prestige of um, Walsh and, and McCoy and mm-hmm. probably Gareth as well, but and, and the success, but he certainly does have the respect and he's. Can be talked about in that same level. Yeah, definitely, sure. definitely. But what a, what a legacy he had, Richard Johnson. We'll move on to the racing that we've obviously that since Cheltenham, there's been some racing taking place. Obviously, the main one was Irish Grand National at Fairy House over the weekend. Surprising result in the Irish Grand National, I'd, I'd say. <laughs> Just a little bit, hundred and fifty to one. Yep. Yeah. Um, Free Will and Dylan. Uh, yeah, I think he's probably more overlooked because there was seven or eight really good stylish novices yeah. that a lot of people were latching on to um, so he was overlooked but he normally does his uh, free will and Dylan, Dylan normally does his, um, his work in good ground around Kilbegan and mm-hmm. stuff like that um, but he's actually quite a smart steer in his day um, he wasn't he wasn't completely off my radar uh, in truth but just didn't think he'd get the trip and I didn't think he'd get such a soft lead that he did um, but you know he jumped really well. He never missed a beat, and there was certainly no fluke about it. He didn't win like a hundred fifty-one shot where like everything fell in behind or something like that. It was there was no luck involved. It was a it was a perfect front front running ride. 
Yeah, definitely. It was a, good, a great race. Good good performance there. There's a couple of other races I want to get your thoughts on. A horse that was in both our radars for a while, Echoes and Rain. Very, very impressive. Yeah, yeah one, one by a street, didn't mm-hmm. she? Um, very impressive. Um, she's probably one that will now go up in grades, um, maybe maybe to Pontchester. Um, very exciting mare. I think Willie Mullins might have been disappointed with some of Mayor's performances yeah. at Cheltenham. Um, this one seems to be progressing, and she was plenty keen enough and still won quite well. Uh, showed a nice turn of foot. Um, yeah, uh, she's definitely want to keep an eye on Grade One in the future at, at Punchestown and for next season. Mm-hmm. Other winners at in Fairy House on Sunday were Sky Ace, Ashdale Bob, uh, Jana Dalton, our horse. I'm really, really keen on. We'll, we'll talk about in a minute. But what was your kind of takeaway for the racing on Sunday? It's good. Um, it's Sky Ace winning at six hundred, yeah. six hundred pound buy and uh, winning a Grade One there. Uh, I don't think it was the strongest of renewals in the world. Nah. Uh, some didn't give the running. Um, Hook up again was third. Uh, I don't think this horse has ever jumped the flight cleanly in her career, nah. but she still see- keeps hitting the frame. You know, she's got an unbelievable engine. They can sort out her jumping. She, she can certainly win, win one big one uh, down the line. But yeah, there's plenty of good performances. Um, Ashley Bob did quite well. Um, it's nice to see him bounce back to form. He he looked like a nice, he'll probably be a nice staying chaser for mm-hmm. uh, Jessica Hamilton next year uh, at novice level, and, and from the Grand National Monday, Run Wild Fred ran really well in second, and I thought yeah. Sempo was as mm-hmm. well in fifth. Um, they're both still maidens, so it'll be interesting if they keep their novice status for next season as well. Definitely. A horse I really, really liked in the bumper on Sunday was Dark Raven for Willie Mullins. Mm-hmm. I think this horse could be a serious contender next year in, no- in the novice campaigns. I hope the stay at two mile. He just looked a really, really classy horse. I know it's his first run, but he just looked really good. Yeah, it was. 11 lengths. He mm-hmm. won. Um, stylish. Niggled along at stages. Uh, and the penny dropped. Uh, he's really progressive. Half-brother to Ted Veal. Mm-hmm. It was a good two miler, so we suggest you stick around two mile. Can go up to two and a half pedigree wise, but there's plenty of options open for, for him down the line. It's another another exciting Willie Mullins bumper horse for sure. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to our look at entry. We'll all, we'll do at the big kind of races first, and then we'll do a bumper preview of the Grand National. We'll start off with the racing on Thursday. We have a great one to start us off. The Manifesto Novices Chase. Looks a pretty good race in paper. We've got Fuzil, Raffles and Hitman, joint favourite 5-2. to two. The Shunter, 7-2. to two. El Dorado Allen at 6-1 to one and 9-1 to one bar. Really good race to start us off. You got a fancy in this race? Yeah, it's, it's a nice warm race. Now the second Fuzil Raffles from the Marsh was here. Uh, Hitman's got good pedigree. El Dorado Allen was second in the Narco, mm-hmm. uh, although he might have been flatter than Rin to be second behind Shishkin. Uh, and then you'd be the plate winner, the shunter. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a good race. Um, I am expecting quite a lot from the Paul Nichols team this week yeah, to, target this, to target this meeting. And I think we'll probably go off to a good start with Hitman. I think yeah, he's, I fancy he's been Hitman quite unlucky. Well. Been quite unlucky this year, I think. I that's. think he would have won the Silly Isles if he stayed his feet. He would have gone mightily close, wouldn't he? Yeah. Um, he was travelling really well. Yeah, I think Ainge would suit him. Slight step up and trip would suit him. Good grounds, no problem. He's a new very one, quite easily odds on. Um, yeah, he ticks a lot of boxes here and I, he comes here fresher than most. Um, official raffles, I think the marsh was quite truly run. Shan yeah, sure yeah. there was. Um, it might have left a slight mark. He, he's still a big threat, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be signed with Hitman in this. Yeah, I would go with Hitman as well. I just think he's probably the, as you say, probably the freshest of the lot. I think he's, I think he's jump, he's his only poor jump has been in that. Racing in that race where he fell. Second to all mankind over two miles, but you could tell he wanted further that day. I think that's also progressive. I can see him winning. We'll move on to the four year old juvenile hurdle later on the 220. A really nice hot, really nice race by the looks of it. Monroe at 10 to 11. Adagio second in the triumph at 7 to 4 and 11 to 1 bar. It does look a two horse race, but you get a fancy out of the two of them. It does. Uh, I think Mon Morale is probably the best British juvenile. Around this season, yeah, um, the collateral form of from Nasalam to the the distance of Dajio beat Nasalam at Chepstow is is quite big. I mean, I think when Mon Morale absolutely tanked Nasalam at Haydock mm-hmm. last time by 
seven and a half lengths. I think Adagio will beat Naslam by two at Chepstow. Mm-hmm. Um, Adagio did run quite well in the triumph. Probably ran to his mark of 147. Yeah. One Morales already rated 147 as well. Mm-hmm. It's a fresh of the two horses again. Paul Nichols targets it. You can see why Shade's odds on. Because he's favourite and probably has a better reputation. And he's, he's open to more progress than, than his market rival. Uh, I'd expect him to win. Uh, John Locke's there for the Skeletons. who needs a bit of respect. But Tritonic's not that Adonis form, which he was fourth in. Yeah. Um, one for the North, though. I mean, five and twenty is a filly that Donald McCain rates quite highly. Three from three, quite good at Muscle Bar last time. She gets weight all round. She's she's probably the most liable outsider if it was if it was going to be an upset in this race. But it's Mon Morales to lose for me. Yeah, I'm going Mon Morales as well. We'll move on to the Betway Ball at two fifty. Not the best race in paper when you look at it. Clan de Zobo, 5-2. Native River waiting patiently, 4-1. to one. Tiger Roll, 5-1 to one and 8-1 to one bar. I don't, have a, I don't have a massive fancy here. I'd love to see Tiger Roll win, but he should be running in the Grand National. I think it's a ludicrous decision to go here and not go for the Grand National. But what's your thoughts? Yeah, um, it's, it's disappointing Tiger Roll's not running the National. Um, it certainly adds the has a bit more luster to that contest. Um, he's also quite hard to assess. Mm. Uh, the, I, I, the, the cross country form is is a bit dubious for all. It was great to see him winning. Um, I think this is too sharp and drying ground for Native River as well. Um, I'm unconvinced by Clan de Obo and better ground as well. Mm-hmm. His finishing effort has left a lot to be desired recently. I think the fact they're reaching for headgear and an experienced horse like that. Yeah. It's a bit of a worry for me. I'd like to see waiting patiently win. Uh, I would like to see him ridden a bit more prominently and a bit more faith than he was in the King George because if he was a bit closer, he may have given Frodo a bit more to think about if he's closer at the pace. He was finishing mm-hmm. off quite well. It proved that he gets three miles. So he should get this as well. Um, and I, th- I think Clan de Obo, Tiger Roll, Native River, they are vulnerable to a bit of speed. I think if waiting patiently is utilised a bit better, he, he he's probably the best of the market leaders. I'd be very interested in Clondor Castle that's as well. I, I, that's the one I'd probably come down on, actually. He's, he's running that... At a price. He's running that handicap at Kempton a couple of weeks before Cheltenham was really good and good ground as well. Like if it, It's going to dry out. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Fisher, to be prominent. Uh, Mr. Fisher, I just have worried about his trap. I don't think he was really... I don't think he was up to much in the Ryan there. If he steps up and trap and does well, then it'll be very good. But probably Clondor Castle each way for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd be similar. Uh, maybe waiting patiently out of the, out the front market. Um, another thing about Mr. Fisher is that Ryanair was a really, really grinding race. Uh, he did he did okay to try and keep up with the gallop, but um, I'd be wary of anything, even the winner, Alaho, uh, mm-hmm. ne- next time out out of that race. I'd be a bit, uh, a bit wary. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to the entry hurdle at 325. That's such a great race in paper, actually. McFabulous 10 to 3, Abacadabras 4 to 1. Jason the Militant 9 to 2, Brewing Up a Storm 11 to 2, and 15 to 2 bar. I'm, I'm a huge fan of McFabulous, but I was quite disappointed in his defeat to Brewing Up a Storm the last day. Abacadabra's going here is interesting, but I am keen to get your thoughts because I know you're an Abacadabra's fan. I am, um, um, but I haven't seen anything to suggest that he's wanting two mile four. No, no. Uh, I think he's all speeds, um, particularly showcase that in the Supreme. I thought, you know, he was a pace horse and Shiskin was, as Stephen Falange was a stayer and Shiskin was kind of the intermediate one. Um, mm-hmm. the, the blend of speed and stamina is all speed. I, think it's, I know it's an easy two and a half, but it's still two and a half miles at the end of the day. Um, did take a tumble. The yard form, though, since Cheltenham has been a bit of a concern. I think they're, they're two for 55. Mm-hmm. Um, Henry de Bromhead, for instance, is one for 26. Um in the last two weeks, yeah, that's probably because most of the stable stars are, haven't, haven't been seen since Cheltenham. Yeah. But it's for a, for a massive operation like that, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's, it's very low, even in even in lead times. Um, Jason the Militant's another one that I think he's more likely to get the trip, but mm-hmm. don't think he'll like this better ground. This has been the plan for McFabulous for a long time, and 
I expect the Nichols team to execute it. I do expect him to win. I think he could chuck out his font all run. I think he just hated the track, didn't like yeah. conditions. He had to give six pound to Bruno up a storm. It's awful levels here. Still give Bruno up a storm a shout. Um, yeah, I, I don't really rate the Irish challenge that much here. No. Hoover Dare's running as well, 11 to 1. Do we give him a chance? Yeah, he, he does have a chance. He's won this race before. So he, he does stay and he, he looks like he needs a trip these days. Um, but he did shake that he needed the run last time. Mm-hmm. It's just whether that potential's there. And you know, they make Nick Fabulous is what, three years younger, progressive. They're both off the same mark. He's not, he's not for me. Neither song for someone. Um, he's maybe been a bit found out as a silver streak in Bally Andy. If Henderson runs buzzing here at twenty mm-hmm. to one, he might be the live one at a price that could that could shake things up. He was made a bad mistake at the Betfair hurdle that ended his chance off more or less top weight. Uh, he was travelling quite well that day. He made made a good mid race move right from the outside. Mm-hmm. He just he just looked like a graded horse that day before he made a mistake. A, a trip two mile four should be within his compass, to be honest, given, given his flat efforts. Um, so yeah, he'd be one at a price, but McFabulous would be the main main fancy for me. Yeah, I love McFabulous. I just I, I just think you need to put a line under his front wheel run. I just I just say doesn't want track suited, and I think he. He has been aimed at this. Really nice horse. His performance in the real heel was really good. I'm really, really impressed with that. I, I just think this horse is really good. I'm fan. Do you think a lot of these horses could go over fences next year? Like, like some McFabulous, Abacadabras, Bruno Upper Storm. Like, I think Bruno Upper Storm might deserve another chance at fences. Yeah, I mean, Bruno Upper Storm didn't really enjoy them at mm-hmm. the uh, start of the season, did he? Uh, and he's, he's won his last two of them back to hurdles, which is, which is quite an achievement. Um, mm-hmm. Whether he's up to this grade now is, is a different question. His rating of 158 seems to be a bit, seems to flatter him, in my opinion. Um, McFabulous is the one that I would expect to improve over a fence as mm-hmm. well. Um, not not for Cheltenham purposes, but I think maybe like three mile at Kempton, I think you'd get that in time. Uh, the Cato Stamos has chased down the line. Um, and I think he, he might be a future King George horse, you know, Paul yeah. Nichols excels with them. Um, I'm not sure Abacadabra is a chaser. Um, I think they, they might want to stick to my route with him. Mm-hmm. They, they are exploring things by by going up and trip with them here. Yeah, definitely. There's a few other races in the, the Thursday. We have the Fox Hunters, Open Hunters Chase, the Red Rum Handicap Chase, and the Mayor's Bumper. Obviously, Billaway is running in the 405, the Hunters Chase. Do you, th- do you fancy him to win? It's a similar situation to Cheltenham, isn't it? You know, he's, he's the one to beat. He holds all the aces, and if he jumps well enough, he should win. He did have a bit of a duel last time out, though. Mm-hmm. If that's taking the edge off him, you know, he's vulnerable to something similar coming and beating him again. Um, so I'd, I'd probably be inclined to try and look away from him. Um, what that is, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, 440, obviously, the the red rum handicap chase, a horse, a horse I like's on the slopes. I think he was, he actually ran really well in that grand annual. We finished fourth. Your horse, Zanza, that you fancied for the Grand Annual was in this. Do you think he has a good chance here? Yeah, I think I don't think Cheltenham's his track. Um, I think this is probably more suitable. Um, he's, he's 9, 10 to 1. I mean, the, the, the two letters in front of his, his form guide is probably going to keep him under the radar for this. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's, he's undoubtedly well handicapped and I'll probably follow up again uh, on him. Um, to see how that pans out because the collateral form of the Grand Annual was, was quite good. Um, Moon over Germany won this last year and I see Jordan Gainfield's books. Yeah. Uh, he won it in absolutely swashbuckling style from the front. He'd always kind of like an Alaho esque performance. Uh, it was really, really good. It came from nowhere. He is significantly high on the weights. So I think he's a stone up from last year, but he has been well supported and you know, that might be, might be quite significant. Yeah, there's a, a, a mayor's bumper as well. Two really nice horses in this. I leaned over at five to six. She bypassed Cheltenham and LA, LA Bell at five to two. Obviously, by, uh, was starting the bumper at the festival. Good race. Good. To, that's a good race. I like Eileen Dover. I think she's really good. She's really impressed me in her three starts this year. Yeah, um, it's just the price. 
I mean, we, we know nothing about this field really. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, with bumpers, I'm just I'm a bit loath to take 45 and anything really. Um, she she does set a clear standard. Um, Elias Bell is a good horse in her own right for sure. Uh, she's won track and trip as well. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, the champion bumper was only three weeks ago. She did give quite a lot in that race. I think that's enough of a reason to oppose her. And I think price-wise, I would just be against Island over as well. I just just pick two at a price and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, finest view is one. It's twenty-five to one for Alan King. Alan King won this two years ago with the Glancing Queen and mm -hmm. pretty impressive style. Only won a Lingfield bumper in all weather, I think. Uh, but he did. She did beat a. A Henderson Hotpot, um, Henderson favourite. She's twenty five to one. Alan King's got a good association with this race at a price. I think she'd be worth a, a pop. Tweed skirt of Nikki Henderson as well looks quite progressive, and she she could be anything. She's also twenty five to one. So I, I would just take those two uh, from the field against against the front two in the bumper, but just because of the nature of the race rather than any hard and form reason, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to Friday where we have more great racing. We'll start with the 220 as the grade one, the Betway top, Novices Hurdle, My Drogo 5 to 2, Third Time Lucky 7 to 2, Dusart 4 to 1, Agero 5 to 1, and Any News 5 to 1, and 8 to 1 bar. Dusart, are we confident he's fit getting into this? Yeah, that's the question mark, isn't it? Um, we don't know. Uh... It's good to see him back though. Firstly, mm, oh, definitely, he yeah. seemed to be he seemed quite lucky that he, he didn't have a really a really serious injury um, at best when he had a schooling accident. Um, I mean, the, the others have raced since, haven't they? And he hasn't, so he's he's got a bit to find anyway. So you're backing him purely based on reputation and, and first view. It's whether he'll be he'll be a backable price on reputation for you rather than anything. Um, it's a race that I've not got much of an opinion in at the moment, to be honest. There's one I've come down on. It's a zero for Kim Bailey at five to one. I like his handicap form this year. A good one at market raising, and then I think he won at Huntingdon. Handicap form going in, and obviously his hurdle is always really good. So I'm keen on him. But as I say, I'm looking forward to seeing Dusart because I do. I think he would have finished second in the Supreme this year if he was if he was fit. Yeah. Uh... They just don't know, do we? Just mm -hmm. one run, but we, I like certainly like the look of it. Um, given given the way so we we are so in glory was, yeah, we'd probably have, probably a place when he be Holy Lord jumped the last, and I don't think this that would have been too far away from him. Yeah. So, yeah, he would have been second or third, I would think. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to the two fifty, the Mildmay Novices Chase Shantry House, the Marsh winner leads it at five uh, two to one. Esport de Romy, Fiddler on the Roof, 6 to 1, Shan Blue, 7 to 1, Happy Go Lucky, 15 to 2, The Big Breakaway, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1 bar. We don't know exactly what's going to turn up here. I think declarations will probably be about between us recording this and, yeah. and putting it out. So, yeah. the Shantry House, I mean, is it hard to see past the winner of the Marsh? It is a bit. He does have that class edge, I think, that, that nothing else really has in this race. Um, the big breakaway if he turns up. One of the Tizard horses, Fiddle on the Roof. I mean, mm -hmm. At least they bring the the brown advisory form against the marsh form. You can see where it see where it shapes up. That might give you a, a thin a thin line in any monkfish versus envoy allen prospects of what which race is going to work out better. Um I suspect that the brown advisory chase was a bit better than it was given credit for. Uh, and the marsh maybe a bit worse than it was given credit mm -hmm. for. Um I I I do think Jantry House has probably got a bit of class. He could he could even develop over three miles and become even better. He, yeah. You know, he might be a good might be a good King George horse next year. Definitely. I think yeah, Shantry House as well. Like the big breakaway as well has got a chance, but I think Shantry House is probably the best the best bet here. Mars Chase, known as a Melon Chase as well. This, this does look actually a decent race. Palatalog five to two, Fakir do the three to one, Master Tommy Tucker fours. Dash will drash our notebook and nuts well at five to one and twelve to one bar. What's your thoughts here? Yeah, what one of my strongest fancies of the week is here. Um I think Dash will drash her is a really strong chance here. Okay. Uh Politolog the favourite was pulled out of the champion chase because he'd blown his nose and it's now ten. Mm -hmm. 
So that's a bit of a worry. Uh, back of the day, he was, you know, ran on in that really attritional Ryan here, and he didn't yeah. turn up for his engagement at Fairy House last week. Um, he might be pulled out here. I don't know. Um, he might come here. I don't know, but I wouldn't want to side with him after that. Uh, and he, he seems to always finish second these days. Um, Master Toby Tucker was shorter in the betting, two years older than Dashiell Drasher, but was beaten last time by Dashiell Drasher, and it was mm-hmm. fair and square. And Dashiell Drasher was jumping uh, out to your right, which suggests that we, he might even be better away from Ascot, even though he likes Ascot. Um, and and he's, he's only one here that would like to front run a long way. I mean, he doesn't have some name, for instance, in the first mile. He brushed him away as if he wasn't there. When he took it up, he'll see it out well. I think he's just guaranteed to run his race. Well, quite a lot of these aren't. Um, I think five to one. I mean, Jeremy Scott Yard are in good form as well. Yeah. I think he's a clear bet for me in this. I've got a fancy here, and it's not, it's five to one, and it's not Dash and Drasher. It's not as well for Anne Hamilton. I think underrated he's horse. underrated. It's one at Aintree, beat Clondow Castle in a handicap, I'm pretty sure. Just, just a fact. I don't, I don't like Politolog at, this, at that price. Faka de Dere worries me. I don't think he'll turn up as well. Master Tommy Tucker, again, probably the best engine out of the, the field, but just jumps like a maniac. Notebook, again, just a, a horse I've never keen on. So I've, I've settled in much well. I'm going to have a wee punt in much well. I quite like him. Very nice horse. Love to see Anne Hamilton and Danny McMenamin get a winner here. It'd be a great story. Fancy that, fancy that. So, Dash or Dash for you, not spell for me. Yeah, uh, the only thing that put me off nuts well a bit was that I haven't seen him since October. I think I, that's, that is a worry, but again, we didn't yeah. see it. Galvin was another one we didn't see to October, so it does work. Uh, it was a long term plan. <laughs> Galvin might run the Scottish National next week. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and uh, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't put it off. Uh, I think this is a race where we could. We'll definitely take on the front two or three in the market, I think. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to the second novice hurdle at 440, another grade one. A lot of very good grade ones here, but Brave Man's Game at seven to four. Cape Gentleman Streets of Doy and Oscar Elite as well in this race. We don't know exactly what's going to turn up here, but I think this could be Brave Man's this could be the arrival of Brave Man's Game at three miles. I think this horse is tailor made for three miles. Yeah, he seems to be screaming for it, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Um he might be screaming for a fence in the future yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, it's short enough. Um, this this form line of between Gallard and Manil is it's not working out well with Statler and, and that lot. I mean that Sharma form from Leopoldstown isn't isn't particularly good. It's it's collateral for uh, Brave Man's game, but yeah, kind of marking him alongside a high rate one fifty horse at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, likes a Gallard and Manil who form of that race has been let down left, right, and centre. Um, but he has a chance. He's a clear favourites chance. Um, Paul Nichols has massive belief in him, and you can see why. Um, it'll also, be a big form boost of Bob Ollinger if he can. Yeah. Brave Man's game can confirm what we thought he was at the start of Cheltenham, as as in like probably one of the best British novice hurdles around. And he should be up to winning this. Um, be interesting. Bothell Bridge if he came here mm-hmm. for the Henderson team, four teams each way. It's a little, just a different line from now, but Bartlett, which doesn't look, doesn't look too good, uh, just kind of comes in an alternative angle, and you know, the Henderson team are coming into a bit of form now at long last. So I, I think he, he might be, he might be one to watch at a price. Yeah, definitely. Well, there's a couple other races. The uh, the first race in the Friday is the Pair Temps Handicap Hurdle at one forty five. We also have the Topham Handicap Chase. Uh, really, uh, this does actually look a really good handicap. And later on, we have an amateur and conditions handicap. So, is there anything at the, the other three races that kind of takes your fancy? Not particularly. Um, far class seems to be running the Grand National instead of the top. Him. Yeah. How on earth do you come to a conclusion that he's a four mile two horse at this stage and not a two and a half miler is beyond me. It's really surprising. The far class is five to one. It's five to one for a top him when he's. 3 to 1 for a Grand National. Mm-hmm. That says it all. I mean, I, I'm a bit surprised it's not coming here. Um, two for gold would have a chance in that. The top of them. Uh, live, love, laugh is, is 11, though. Uh, there's, a, there's a strong word for Visio Man if Penny de Bromhead's in this race. 
seems to be laid out for it. They'd probably have a chance as well. Precious Cargo might have a chance. Yeah, it's, it's wide open. There's there's three or four in there that could potentially win this. And Morning Vicar shaped really well in the Kim Muir mm-hmm. before his stamina totally gave out. Yeah. Um, this might be more suitable for him if he takes to the national fences. Um, he would probably have a very good chance as well. Plenty to consider, as always. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to Saturday, the 2.25, the Mersey Novices Hurdle. My Drogo, 2-1, to one, Brave Man's Games in here, Bally Adam, Dussart, the Shunter. We don't know what's going to turn up here, but Bally Adam's in here. This is his only entry, so do we think he might turn up? Probably. Um, don't know if he'll make it. Um, hopefully he does. Uh, it seems to be the plan. Uh, he's been backed as if he's going to be running, uh, which is a positive, I suppose. It brings the Supreme Form into, into consideration. Um, quite like Manila Drama mm-hmm. of um, Donald McCain and Brian Hughes. I thought he was really good last time. He won the Sydney Banks. There was certainly no fluke about it. He improved for a step up to two and a half miles. Good grounds is fine for him. Um, yeah, at an each way price, I think he, he's a chance for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a race. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't pin. I'm not going to pin anything to, to this wall just yet. I quite like JBY. I know he was disappointed in that race at Warwick, but he bounced back pretty well. He won a, He did cut bounce back and win. I think uh, I I don't know, but JBY maybe each way would be my pick there. We'll move on to three o'clock, which is the Maghull Novices Chase, and we're hoping we see Shishkin one to four. So he's, it could be a possession. All mankind's four to one. Tamarock to Martin's eight to one, twelve to one bar. If Shishkin turns up here, just give him the victory then. Yeah, I think he'll win. I think he will turn up as well. Uh, the vibes seem seem good about him. That he's he's came out of that Arco win quite well and fresh. Um, all mankind had a harder race than him. Um, I think Tamarick de Matan could could do him for second. So um, I think for, for for a bet that's maybe not odds against, uh, I'd, I'd go for that forecast. Yeah, definitely. But we'll move on to the three o'clock, uh, three thirty-five. Sorry. And we might finally get leg three of the, the duel between Time Hill and Paisley Park. Obviously, Time Hill missed Cheltenham. Time Hill 5 to 2, Paisley Park 11 to 4, Side of Belly 7 to 2, Roxana 6 to 1, 8 to 1, Beacon Edge, and 12 to 1 bar. If time, I really like Time Hill, but just worry about his fitness. Yeah, you have to worry how ready he is for this. Um, I think Paisley Park is a honourable 163 horse. Um, but he's not getting any better. I no. think that Cheltenham, Oren Porter rather exposed that. He'll run to his mark. I think Sadie Belly will run to his mark. So, so you're looking for something in the late 160s could potentially run there. Um, Roxana, this is her trip. She'll be held up. Um, would certainly not rule her out. She ran quite well in the Mayor's Hurdle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she gets these allowances, which is which is a big help. Um, the one I take a chance with is Leslie Gar Oscar. Um, I just think it would be a prominent aggressive front running ride would, would really suit him mm-hmm. um, he was travelling quite well in the stairs huddle before falling three out he looked like a big player uh, he was certainly going at as he was going better on Saturday Berlay and um, Paisley Park in my mind he looked like the challenger to four and quarter t- to my eye it's, it's just whether just whether you know, this drying ground might be a slight negative um, but I don't think there's a lot of pace in this race. I think a lot want to be held up. Um, I think he's got a big chance uh, if he's not get any. If he's not worse for wear after that fall, and it, at ten to one, he, he is overpriced, and he, he'd be my he'd be my play of the race. Yeah, I'm, I don't. Have, I'm I quite like to see Time Hill win, but I wasn't going to Oscar. There's a lot in here. I, I think could run, and it could be a good race actually, but. I go for Time Hill. We'll move on to there's other races obviously before we'll touch on the main race on the Saturday. Handicap Hurdle with the one for the opening race. We have the Betway Handicap Chase at four fifteen and the bumper at six twenty. Is there anything in those three races you, you like the look of? No, not not particularly no. Uh, I'll just we'd be waiting till the day and and seeing what turns up uh, for for those three. Yeah, definitely. But we'll move on to the big race, the race that makes this festival, the, the Randox Helps Grand National. What's your favourite Grand National memory? Oh, one for Arthur, winning it in 2017. That was fantastic. 
back to ever since it won at Warwick and yeah, it was a brilliant moment. I think it's a massively underrated Scottish success story. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, Couldn't agree more with that. Great performance. Definitely. We'll move on to this year's renewal and we'll get through the bet. And cloth cap, 72 favourite for John Joe Neal. Borough Saint, 8 to 1. Any second now, 9 to 1. Kimber Light Candy, 11s. Manila Times, 12. Secret Reprieve, 14. The Storyteller, 16s. Discorama, 18s and 20 to 1 bar. What are we thinking here about cloth cap? Do we think he's too short? Uh, he's the right favourite. Um, mm-hmm. Whether he should be as short as Tiger was two years ago is, is another thing. I'd advise that if you do fancy him, I'd probably leave it as late as possible because I don't think he's going to get any shorter. No. Um, so you might get a better price a little closer to the off, um, maybe five to one, something like that. Um, he's the right favourite, isn't he? He's just, there's just a lot of things going his way. You know, he's, he's obviously well in. Some people think a stone. His ratings, uh, but his ratings noticeable into 10 stone five. He, yeah, it was weights. It's weights ideal. One four eight. It's just not a one four eight horse, is it? No. He's at least 155. Five. So he's seven pound well in. He's going to get his drying grounds. We know he stays because he's, he's gone back to the line when he was third in the Scottish Grand National over four miles. So the trip's not a concern. Um, lack of experience at entry. It's, it's not a massive. It's not a massive concern anymore because it's, it's it's not it's not the jumping test that it used to be. You know, it's a lot it's a lot more generous than it was. Um, he likes to race prominently, which has been an advantage in recent years. He, he does tick a does tick a lot of boxes, um, but in a race of this nature where anything can happen, he will get competition for the lead. Ma- I presume Magic of Light will certainly be one of them that will be yeah. up there. Um, and he's also not the biggest horse in the world, but that certainly didn't hold Tiger all back. So, yeah, he, he's the type of horse that historical trains. You wouldn't think Grand National type, but recently in this modern era, he does he does fit the bill, and yeah, I can't put anyone off him. But it's just whether it's whether you're a fan of the price or not. Yeah, that's a big thing for me as well. I think he's a great horse. Secret Reprieve also won the Welsh National fourteen to one. If, don't know if he's going to turn up. I think he probably will. But if he does, I've got a fancy on him. Just looking through it, far class. I couldn't, I, as you say, how they've come yeah. up. How they come up with the, the decision that he's four four miles. Annabelle Fly at twenty eight to one. He's always going to stay, and he's always going to be there at the end. He just might yeah. be a sneaky yeah, one at twenty eight yeah. to one. Uh, Lakeview Lad forty to one. Obviously, he's got good form, beating the likes of Santini, taking risk. Obviously, Scottish National one of forty to one. Canelo, I, I see Canelo's actually going definitely running. 40 to 1. He's been a horse that's been on my radar for a while. Not particularly for, I thought he could have ran and maybe the ultimate Cheltenham, but Canel, I would probably say Canelo 40 to 1 is my, my each way play. Yeah, I mean, there's several, isn't it? I mean, 151 shot won the Irish guy national. So, I mean, exactly. It's a race that you just wouldn't put anyone off anything at a price, would you? Um, the last point about Clothcat is that I think his Kelso run is, is win there. Isn't good form. No. Um, it's, 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 I mean, ESO was second, and you use that as a prep run for the Gold Cup. Um, I mean, that's de- definitely Red was in it. He's 12 and flew over the hill. You know, two for Gold hated the track. Um, and Lakeview Lad just didn't give his two running. So, mm-hmm. he dominated. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mark him up because of that. Um, so, therefore, I'm inclined to take him on. I think Burrow Saint is a huge chance. He's been yeah, ever since he won, ever ever since he won the Irish National. Do we think? Um, do we think Paul Townend's going to make it? In the nature of injury, I'd be very doubtful. Yeah, I'd be very doubtful. I'd be, if he was a football, I certainly wouldn't. No, uh, well, I would say, um, but his jockeys are hard as nails, aren't they? We give him every chance, of course. Um, Burrow Saint. Is, is one that I have sided with. I think he does have a he does have a big big chance. Um, I, I, I'm worried slightly that he jumps to his right a little bit mm-hmm. uh, on occasions. But this better ground will, will suit him and the stamina test well as well. Any second now, I mean Ted Walsh is just a dab hand. Yeah. Getting these ready, Papillon for instance, and he's even won over two miles this season. Like, Papillon did before. I'm not saying that he is Papillon. No. He's probably he's probably not, but he's going to be suited by it, isn't he? I mean, one of those two 
are bound to hit the frame at least at least one of them. Uh, you'd have to think. Um, Manila Times deserves respect when Rachel Blackwell's going to ride. Is that is that confirmed? Yeah. It seems to be the you know, bottom of the weights sneaks in. Um, has a great profile for it. Secret Reprieve needs a couple to drop out. In fact, the likes of Farfax are might might not might not get in all of a sudden. Um, a little bit doubtful. I think he probably still will mm-hmm. sneak in. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I'd like to see him have another run in between the Welsh and Arsenal. He might be lightening the experience. <sighs> Discrammer plunge is interesting mm-hmm. as well. Um, I was, you could pick it. You could pick it. You could pick the, the drying the drying grounds against him a little bit. I think. Yeah, Acapella Pools Pools Bar puts me off slightly with that as well. I know he's beat Oral Saint this year, but it just no I've never. Aye, right. yeah, but it's going to be really interesting. So we'll go for we'll pick a winner and each way a uh, a good each way and a horse way high, like high in the bet and that we think could run a big race. So we'll go for who will win the Randox Health Grand National in your opinion? Uh, Oral Saint for me. I'm going to go for a secret reprieve if he gets in. A big each way for me would be Annabelle Fly at 28 to 1. Annabelle Fly is the one I landed on each way. And I'm going to go for a horse at 40 to 1, Canelo, to run a big race. A big outsider. Uh... I'm scrolling through them here. No, that's from my ass. Yeah, not a lot's going on. Class Conti, the fact Mullins is sending him over here is probably a plus. He's actually ran two good races last time. He's like stringing this up together. I think he's a half brother of Sylvan Yanko Conti as well. I mean, mm-hmm. he's 149 might be within his compass. At 40 to 1, there's probably, there's probably worse bets than him, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a grand national. Anything can happen. Uh, it's just a race to enjoy. Put your put a bet on and enjoy. We'll, we'll do a wee lucky 15 as well. We'll pick two horses each for the, the fest, the entry festival, who we think. I'll start off. I'll go with Hitman in the first race on the Friday. Uh, Thursday, sorry. Uh, Dash of Drasher. In whatever yeah. race that is again. I know. It's, uh, I'm going go to go for McFab- I'm gonna go for McFabulous in the entry. Dash of Drasher in the Melling Chase. Uh, Borough Saint the National Brilliant We will be covering the Aintree Festival all over our social media over the past over the next few days Callum it's been a pleasure to welcome you to the debut episode of the Horse Racing Show with our spin off from the road to Cheltenham you enjoyed being back on? Yeah no, it's been great fantastic Brilliant. as always Brilliant Tune in and we'll be back soon with another episode thanks very much for watching everyone we'll see you soon cheers